Hello, and welcome to the Science of Art. I'm your host, Mott Tuman, and today we're going to be talking all about light fastness. So what light fastness is, is a measure of how well different mediums resist UV damage. Things can get damaged by UV radiation over time because in all of the different synthetic molecules that make up paint exists something known as a chromophore. A chromophore is just the molecular structure that produces the color that we see when we're looking at something. And that chromophore can get worn down and damaged over time due to UV radiation from the sun. Hence why our paints tend to change and fade over time. That fading and changing can differ depending on what colors and what different types of mediums that you use. For instance, the red end of the color light spectrum tends to have much longer wavelengths and tends to absorb a lot more of that UV radiation, which means that red paints and pigments tend to be slightly less light fast than other colors. Now this is not the same across the board, but I have other examples of this, for instance, in 2009, there was a newly synthesized color called Yin Min Blue, and Yin Min is actually named after the color's chemical composition. And that color, when it was synthesized at Oregon State University, they slowly discovered Hello. over time that it was extremely light fast. In fact, so light fast that when it is hit with UV radiation, it actually reflects some of it back. So the surface of Yin Min Blue paint, which is just now starting to be introduced to the market, is actually cool to the touch. So you might be wondering, how do you find out what the light fastness of your medium is? There are several different scales that are used depending on the company that you might buy your medium from, but there are a few different standards that are pretty even across the board. The oldest known light fast rating system available to us is known as the blue wool scale. That scale works on a scale of one to eight with BW1 or blue wool one being the least light fast and BW8 being the most light fast. That scale was determined actually based off of blue wool dyes. So they took eight different types of dyes, the first one being the least light fast, and then the last one being extremely light fast, and they compare them to whatever paint samples they're testing. So if a paint sample seems like it's faded a lot, it would be compared to BW1, and that's what its light fast rating would be. That system is still commonly used in the paint system today, but it's kind of taken on a new name. One of the most common light fast rating systems we have available to us is the ASTM system. That is the American Society for Testing and Materials. They actually base their system off of the blue wool system. So they do the testing in the same way, but they have a different way of labeling it. They will label their scale actually in the opposite way. So LFI is actually the most light fast in this scale with LFV or LF5 being the least light fast. This is one that you will see pretty commonly in brands. So I have an example right here of this type of light fast rating system. This is a Liquitex bottle. And you can see right here on the side that they've rated this paint as excellent with a light fast rating of one. And that is based off of the ASTM standard scale. The last light fast rating system that is available to us and the most common one is a star rating system. Now, unfortunately, this system isn't really standardized and it will change depending on what company and what brand you are buying from, but it is fairly straightforward. The more stars that are on the labeling, the more light fast it's going to be. The number of stars will vary between brands and I actually have a few examples to show you guys right here. This right here is the Lucas Acryl Studio Paints and you can see right down there that it is labeled with three stars. This brand, three stars, is the max, so this is the most light fast that this paint can be. And then I have a few other examples here of this Turner Aquil gouache, which uses the same type of light fast rating. And really this light fast rating is the one that you will see commonly across most brands. So you'll see on the back there that this one has two stars and I believe the max for this brand is three stars. So it is about a mid level in terms of light fastness. Almost all professional companies will have some type of light fast rating on their tubes and on their bottles, but there are a few exceptions to this. One exception to this is if a paint includes mica. So in some cases, if you're looking at your tube of paint and you know it's a professional brand, you know they normally do light fast ratings, sometimes if the paint contains mica, it will not have a light fast rating because mica being a super shiny material actually interferes with the machines that are used for light fast ratings. So this is an example right here of a tube of paint that contains mica, as you can see at the top, 
but also has that light fast rating. And if you have a tube of mica that has a light fast rating, the reason for that is that instead of actually testing the paint in this tube, they are taking the pigment that is used and they are using the historical data for that pigment on terms of how light fast it is. So there's been testing done on this pigment in the past that has shown that it has a mid-level in terms of light fastness. So that's how they got this light fast rating. Instead of testing the actual paint since that mica that is in this paint would interfere with that. And I can actually pour a little bit of this out so you guys can see the actual mica. If you're unfamiliar with it, it is just a shiny, kind of stone that they add into the paint so that you can have a little bit of glittery effect to it. All of that being said, you might be wondering how to conduct your own light fast tests at home. Large companies use pretty complicated machines known as either Xenon Arc or as Q-Sun machines. So we don't have that kind of technology available to us at home, but there are steps you can take in order to figure out what the light fast tests of your paints are. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is keep in mind what kind of mediums you typically use and where you typically display them. To get a really accurate light fast test that's gonna help reflect how your paintings are gonna survive over time, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're testing on the material you typically use. So if you typically paint on canvas, make your light fast tests on canvas. If you typically do it on paper, make it on paper so that you know for certain that your tests are gonna be secure. The next thing you have to consider is where exactly you're going to be placing your swatch that is to be kept in sunlight. It would be ideal if we could place it outside directly facing up towards the sky so it's getting the blunt force of that UV radiation. But for a lot of us, we don't have a place where we can easily put a piece of paper outside without it getting damaged. So the best place that you can really put your swatches is on your car dashboard. That way they can lay flat and you can have the brunt force of radiation coming down on them. The next best place that you can put your swatches is in a window. Ideally, that window would be facing either east or west when the sun is setting or rising so you can get that UV radiation at some point during the day. But when it's placed vertically rather than horizontally, you will receive less direct sunlight. That is something to keep in mind, but if you would like to accurately represent the, whatever environment that you're placing your paintings in, it might be like you hang your paintings vertically on a wall. So having your swatches vertically might work better for what you want. The last key thing about creating these swatches is keeping in mind how long you want to test for. The most ideal light fast rating test that we can do at home would occur for over a year. This is especially true if you're testing pigment-based paints because most of the times they're a lot more light fast than dyes and they can take a really long time before you start seeing the effects of sunlight. If you can do an at-home test for over a year, that is great, but however long you decide to do your test for, make sure you label when you finished your test or how long the test will be. So if you decide to do more tests in the future, you know how they will compare. It's important to keep in mind that different colors and different pigments will fade differently. So some pigments will seem light fast for a very long time and then fade very suddenly, whereas others will have a more gradual fade over time. So you wanna make sure you look at your test regularly and see and know what the results of your test are as you test them. Another few things to keep in mind is that sometimes we will have tubes of paint that in their name, they might be called permanent. Like one of the most common ones is that you might see permanent alizarin crimson rather than just alizarin crimson. It's a good thing to keep in mind that whatever a company decides the name their paints doesn't always accurately reflect the properties of that color. So sometimes the word permanent is placed in there just so that they have a differentiation between other colors rather than telling you what the light fast rating of that paint is. You should always make sure you check out the light fast rating on your tubes and not just trust a color's name. So that is all about light fast rating. We do have a whole other show on archivability. If you guys would like that, check that out. And if you're concerned about how you keep your materials and your paintings looking good over time, please check out that video. If you have any cool questions or facts about light fastness, please include them in the comments. And thank you so much for watching The Science of Art. For instance, the red end of the color light spectrum tends to have much blah, blah, blah. Thank <laughs> you.